All right, thanks for watching. And today we will show that the sequence definition of continuity is actually equivalent to the epsilon delta con definition of continuity. So from now on, we'll be able to use them interchangeably. So let me just remind you of the definitions. So first definition is that f is continuous at x naught if whenever, so for any sequence, xn, xn goes to x naught, then f of xn goes to f of x naught. So for any sequence converging to x naught, f of xn converges to f of x naught. And again, assuming xn is in your domain, etc., etc. And the second definition is just the epsilon delta one. So if f is continuous at x naught, if uh, for all epsilon, so no matter how small, for, uh, no matter how small your error, for epsilon positive, there is delta. So some small threshold positive such that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. Okay. All right, and our goal is to show that those two are equivalent. And let's do the easier thing first. Let's ask Let's uh, show that epsilon delta implies the sequence definition. So, uh, definition two implies definition one. So, suppose epsilon delta is true. What do we want to show? We want to show that whenever you have a sequence xn converging to x0, then f of xn goes to f of x0. So suppose also xn goes to x0, and what we want to show, we want to show that f of xn goes to f of x0. What does it mean to show that f of xn goes to f of x naught? Well, let epsilon be given. And remember what we want to do, we want to find some threshold large enough such that if n is larger than capital N, then f of xn minus f of x naught so the difference between the two is less than epsilon. Okay, and let me explain this first with a little picture. So remember, what does epsilon delta definition of continuity mean? It means that, let's say this is your function, and this is x naught, and this is f of x naught. Epsilon delta means no matter how small of an error you have, then you have this good region centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon. Okay. Epsilon delta means no matter how small the error is, you can have if x is close enough to x naught. So if x is in this region of radius delta, then f of x is guaranteed to be in the good region of radius epsilon. Now here's the idea. Suppose you have a sequence xn converging to x naught. Well, eventually the sequence is in the good region of radius delta, because xn is close to x naught. And therefore, by epsilon delta, f of xn is also in the good region with epsilon, meaning the distance between f of xn and f of x0 is less than epsilon, and this just implies by definition that f of xn is close to f of x0. So let's make this more precise, since xn converges to x, 
we know in particular there's a threshold where xn minus x naught is less than delta. There is capital N such that if n is bigger than capital N, then xn minus x naught is less than delta. So it's just the definition of a limit of a sequence, except instead of using epsilon, I use delta, because epsilon is always already taken. But since f is continuous at x0, what we know is that xn minus x0 less than delta implies f of xn minus f of x naught less than epsilon and therefore we're actually done because hence with that with that capital n if n is bigger than capital n then f of x n minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. So we use delta just as a little helper, kind of like in Super Mario when you have Yoshi, you use Yoshi first, but then at the end it's like, goodbye, I have to reach the goal. And there you don't have any delta anymore. So the point is this implies that f of xn goes to f of x naught. So this part is done, all right. And now let's show the other equivalence. Let's show that definition one implies definition two. And mathematically, this is the same as saying, let's show that not definition two implies not definition one. In other words, if it rains and have an umbrella, it means that if you don't have an umbrella, definitely it doesn't rain. Now, the proof isn't hard, except all you need to do is to know how to negate statements. So, remember the definition of epsilon delta definition of continuity. It means for all epsilon, there is delta such that if um, such that for all x if x minus x naught is less than delta then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon how do you negate a statement? Namely, just replace for all with there is and replace there is with for all. So, uh, all for one and one for all, epsilon. Um, so now, let's just do this. So not definition two means there is epsilon positive such that for all uh, delta positive, um, there is x such that. So what's the negation of if then? Well, what's the negation of if I do math, then I'm happy? It means that you do math and you're not happy. So such that x minus x naught less than delta and the, not this, so f of x minus f of x naught is greater or equal to epsilon. And in fact, let me illustrate that with a picture because I think it's very important in your understanding. So what does it mean for a function not to be continuous? So let's say something like that, where you have suddenly a jump f of x naught, okay, and this is, let's say, uh, x naught. What this means is that there is some evil error, and remember, error gives you a certain region. So this is f of x naught, and this is like the good region of radius epsilon. 
there is some error such that no matter how close you are to x naught, so no matter how small delta is, you can always find some evil x naught that is in this region, so x minus x naught is less than delta, but such that f of x is outside of the good region. And in fact, notice here f of x is outside of this good blue region. However, there might be other x's that are in the good region, like here. But all it matters is that there's one that doesn't work. Now, how do you... Um, remember, our goal is to show that it's not sequentially continuous. How do you do that? Well, just replace delta by 1 over n. Then essentially you get something that's less than 1 over n, but uh, greater than epsilon. Here's what I mean. So therefore, with that epsilon, uh, for all n, there is, is, so usually x, but here because we fix n, x depends on n. So there is xn such that xn minus x naught is less than 1 over n, but f of xn minus f of x naught is greater or equal to epsilon. So in other words, again, picture-wise, what does that mean? It means that, again, this is f of x naught, this is f of x, what this means is we have this sequence xn, this is x0, we have this sequence xn that actually gets closer and closer to x0. So always like, uh, because this thing is less than 1 over n, so xn gets closer and closer to x0, yet at every point f of xn is not even epsilon close to f of x0. You see, even though xn converges to x0, f of xn cannot possibly converge to f of x0 because it's always outside this fixed region. So, if you want to conclude, therefore, wherefore out art thou? Uh, therefore, xn goes to x0 by this identity, but f of xn cannot possibly converge to f of x0 since for all n we have this. Think for instance, f of xn is always one away from f of x0 for this fixed epsilon. Uh, and therefore we are done. We have found, so we have found, One sequence xn converging to x0, but f of xn does not converge to f of x0. And therefore, we are done with this. All right, very good. And from now on, you can just use epsilon delta or sequence definition at your own liking. All right, thank you very much.